Okay, welcome back to Lake Lock Build. I'm gonna scoot down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys a little uh, how-to. Now that we're gonna take one of these single game boxes and we're going to stick it in the wall here. And so how does that work? So first we're gonna want we'll take these nails out because we're not gonna be going into the wood. And then I'll drill in here, and that's what we're gonna tap on into the concrete and set our box. But first we need to cut out the styrofoam. So what we'll do, take my take, I use a sharpie just because it works real well. So right here, I'm gonna go on the edge, make sure that I don't get into the fox box because that's the plastic and it's hard, so I'm gonna scoot over just ever so slightly to make sure I don't hit that. Mark around it. Oops. Just like that. Yeah, I'm going to measure real quick, make sure I match the other side. I might need to scoot down, so let's take a look. So, center line is 48, and I got bottom 48. So I need to scoot down, so I need to make that half. So let's try, let's try that again. And I'm glad I did that, because yeah, that wouldn't look right. So what we'll do is we'll go center line to the upper. That looks better. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna cut that one. So the way to do it, so we'll get our electric chainsaw. Put on my hearing protection because this guy's loud. And here we go. I don't know if you can see that. This is why I use an electric chainsaw. I always hit some sparks. These poor blades, these things are so dull now because it keeps hitting the concrete, but that's why I use this one because it's really inexpensive. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pry that out. Simple pry bar, just nice and easy. There we go. And out pops the little guy, just like that. Now, let's see how my measurements did. Stick my box in there. There we go. All right, let's see how we did it. So it's a little tight, so I need to cut there and there to get that to fit in there. All right, so. It's a learning curve. Okay, let's try that. See how that looks. Gross. Perfect. All right, and we'll measure it. Make sure our half inch drywall hits it. Dead on, right at half an inch. So, that is how we do it. So, I'll go back. So, I'll take this and we'll drill it, drill it through, put our tack on. But in essence, now you know. So the other question people had, all right, well, how to get the wire to it? So what we'll do is once I, once we pull these, then you can take your, your uh, that saw, and we'll cut a channel with this guy. Take it down to it, and then you feed your wire into it, and then you just push that wire into the styrofoam. And you cut a nice deep channel so that that wire sits all the way back at this, um, at this two and, Three eighths, two and five eighths, two and five eighths. So that wire sits back at the two and five eighths, which is actually deeper than a one and say, oh, one and three quarter, which is a two by four. So the wire actually sits further back in there. So when we're putting drywall screws in, you'll have an inch and a quarter drywall screw, which actually won't get back to where the wire is. 
Um, so it makes it nice and safe that you don't actually drill or screw in one of your screws into that wire. So that's where it's important to make sure that wire is tucked all the way back in there so that you don't uh, screw into it. So hope that one is uh, enlightening to you all. That was actually my first one to do, so I wanted to document it to see how it looked, and that's a pretty, pretty easy learning curve on it. So right now, I'm going to go over how do you install your Romex in your ICF walls. And so, over here, of course, standard wood construction, right, where you drill it through and pop them through. Now, when we get to here, this is where it changes. And so, what you can see is I took my little electric um, chainsaw and you cut your groove, went under the window, all the way around. So, let me see if I can zoom up in here and show you how that works. So you can see how you can tuck that wire, the width of my chainsaw blade works just perfect for that wire when you push it back in there. And I use my, use my framing pencil and I use the back of it and it is the perfect size here to push that all the way back in there just like that. And when you push it in there, boy, it stays. And so, what I was going to show you is a little detail, like right here, to make sure that this wire gets pushed back in there, so that a nail, say a nail's coming in here like that, you don't want it to puncture that. So be mindful of things like that. Now, there's a little caveat with when you use an ICF walls, that my drywall is going to end in between one of the nailing flanges right here, right? So there's a, there's a screw flange here, but there's nothing right there. So there's two ways to do it. Of course, you can put the glue right on the back of the drywall and glue it. But also the sequence, if you put this one on first, and then you put this wall on, and push that against there with that glue, that'll keep that one from being having any movement. Even though you're not screwing it in there, you're screwing it in back here. So, just have to be a little bit mindful when you're doing these because you know, regular wood framing, anytime you have a corner, inside corner, outside corner, things like that, you're always gonna have something to connect to. So. Say like right here, right? Your drywall would come this way and your drywall would come this way. You'd have something to screw into on each side. Now with the ICF, it's just a little bit different. When you have the corners, like over here, this is a manufactured corner from Fox Block. Well, it has the screw flanges on those inside corners right there. Now, over on this one, this is where I have a common joint right here, and I don't have one. All right, you can see in there because we had to cut the wall because this one is a T intersection instead of a right angle. And it'll happen on the other side of that as well. So we will have to be mindful to make sure and use some glue to glue it actually against the wall. But also, you can see that there's a fox block there. And there's actually, wait a minute, there's actually a fox block there. So that one, we looked out on that one. So we can screw into that one. So we can put this one in first and then screw that one on there. And that way that'll keep those together. So little things like that will make a big difference when you're putting this together. Let's continue here. I'm going to have an outlet here, but I also have an outlet up here for my television. So I need to make another branch off to there. This will be my, um, my Cat6 cabling for the television. So that will be able to, so I'll be able to run that in the channel and I should be able to shove that in the same channel as I go up here and for my lights. And then I can take it and pop it through there and take it back upstairs to the hub 
so that when I hook all this stuff together, I have a central location. So if it's gonna be internet, streaming, whatever it's gonna be that I'm gonna use, and I have a wired connection there. And I'm also gonna use the Cat6 for my security system. I've found that Cat6 has the power and you can do the pan, tilt, zoom, all of that through your um, through a wired connection versus wireless. Okay, I hope you guys can see me pretty well. What we'll do is we'll take our Romex, and I start from the termination and come back. I don't know um, if that's the industry standard, but that's the way I do it. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll come here, and I'm like, oh, I can't get in through the styrofoam, right? Because the styrofoam's not cut right. So take my utility knife, and it's the cheap one where you can stick it way out like that. Come in here. Cut a little wedge out of this guy. Pop that guy out. There's still just a little bit left in the back of it. So I'll take my screwdriver, clean out the rest of that. Here it comes. All right, so now, that I've made a little bit of a wedge, kind of an angle for it to go in. Let's see how that does. So, I'll bend my, my Romex so that it'll come back to me. I'll get it started in here. There we go. And I kind of bend it, push it. So what it's doing is it's making a U. Bend it some more, push it. Bend it some more, push it. And if you see what's happening is that it's made a U, so it's actually come back to me. Now, this is a hard bar to get this off that through there. I'll get it close enough here. Oh, that's pretty close already. All right, so let me grab the camera here so you can see what I'm looking at. I'll zoom up in here. So you can see where it's gone in there, come out the back, and then the Romex, and you take this little guy, and you push it in there, and it's way back in there. So if I put my finger on there, it is that far back, which is wonderful because my screw penetration will only be about that much, because it'll be into the Fox block, so I have plenty of room. So what I'll do is continue pushing this guy in there like that. If you notice, if you turn it, flat spot, and you just push it, push it, push it. And then what I'll do is I'll come down here, make sure this guy is in the, out of the way, and I'll poke it right through that one right there, pop it out, and that way I can continue my power coming around outlet back out i'll have to make a split into three so that one goes up to that one and then this one continues over there i have now put in the uh, can lights the wiring for the can lights and so i'll show you what that looks like so it's exactly how i did the garage so I cut the line and then work my way up and over each one of the beams and then for the parallel lines of course those are very simple you can just cut the channel in there and then run the wire in there. And so I'll have four of them. Let's go back here. So there's one there, there, over there, and then over there. So that will square the room out. So right now I am going to be working on my data, which is the Cat6 cable, which is right here. And you run that just exactly the same way as you would the Romex. And so I can show you where I just started. So cut my little angle there so that the wire fits in into the uh, receptacle there. And then the wire just literally pushes in here like this. I'll get a little bit further for you. And I just take my little pencil and I just push it all the way to the back. Just like that. So let's go take a look over here. I went ahead, I had plumbed an opening over here 
for an exhaust vent. I don't know if I'll ever use it because we have an ERV, but just in case, for some reason, the ERV doesn't seem to be keeping up with it. I bought an exhaust fan and installed it. And then I ran my duct work, which right now it's just laid in there. And then I put it through there. And so I'm gonna make sure that we're on either side of where we put the screws in. So I just have it laid up there right now. But once we put the drywall up in there, I'll fasten it up there a little bit nicer than that. But now let's go over here and I'll show you my panel that I've been working on. So this has been my raceway, if you would call it, um, through the ceiling because I have cabinetry that will be below this. And so I'll have my ductwork for the ERV, which will be supply and demand. And so we're uh, supply and exhaust. So I've run the wiring on both sides to make sure that we don't have any um, narrowing of that opening right there. So the wire that I have right now on the sides is going to be downstairs. And then I thought for the upstairs, I'll run it right on the bottom of this so that I can keep it separated. So it comes along the ceiling there, goes into my panel there. So that's looking really good. I went ahead and dropped the ceiling in here to get ready uh, for the wire for the upstairs that will go along the top of this and then drop in. And then I have my stackable washer and dryer. So I got my 220 for the dryer, my 110 for the washer. Everything's really, really coming along. I almost have the whole downstairs uh, wired in this last uh, few days. The weather's been bad. Um, over here, ooh, let's go over here. We'll go out the back. So let's take a look here. Okay, for right now, I have my 224, my air conditioner, that'll be right here. And I'll put a junction box and then we'll put it in conduit probably right there because it'll be exposed and then I'll drop it down and connect it. And I'm not exactly sure if it goes on this side or that side because I haven't got it out of the box yet. But the other two wires that you see there, those will be for the, um, I'll put those in conduit. So we'll have some lights here. And then I'm also wanting to put some big, some big floodlights that will shine out into the forest here. So I don't know yet if I'm gonna go down and put them uh, under my deck here and shine out, or if I'm going to brace it up here and then shine down that way. I don't know yet. There's something that I think might be cool with the light shooting out from underneath this deck that so you can stand here and it'll light up all of that. I think it might be really cool versus overhead, but I don't know yet. So that'll be a little bit further down the road.